Okay, so this is 2024 Higher Level Applied Maths Leaving Cert Paper Question 3. And this is a particle moving along a straight line has acceleration a dv dt is equal to t squared sine 2t where t is positive or equal to 0. v is 0 when t is 0. Using integration by parts or otherwise calculate v when t is pi over 2. Okay, so we're going to use integration by parts. It's usually best to go with what's suggested, so let's do that. Integration by parts is in your tables. It's the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. And remember, we're going to use the inlate rule as well. So we're given dv dt is equal to t squared sine to t and we've got to work out what v is so in other words we've got to integrate to find v so the first thing we're going to do is just get dv is equal to t squared sine 2t dt so we're bringing the dt across next thing we're going to do is we're going to integrate both sides so if we integrate the left hand side we'll get v and what we've got to do now is integrate the right hand side so it's t squared sine 2t with respect to t. Now using the inlate rule we can see that the algebra part is first and then the trigonometry part so we're okay from that point of view so let's uh, find all the different parts that we need to put into this integration by parts formula. So what I'm going to do is let u equal to t squared and dv equal to sine 2t dt. So you differentiate here on the left and we're going to integrate on the right. So we look for du dt which is going to be 2t and that will give us our du which is 2t dt. We're going to integrate on the right so if you integrate dv we're going to, that'll give us v. If we integrate sine 2t we're going to get minus cos. Remember if you integrate sine you get minus cos so it's going to be minus cos 2t anyway but we have this extra term in here where we've got a 2t so you can imagine if you differentiate if you check your answer by differentiating you're going to end up with an extra 2 by the chain rule so we've got to put in a half here to counteract that 2 or to, to cancel that 2 if you like. So it's going to be minus a half cos 2t. There are four terms there if you like so let's just put those into our uh, formula over here. So we've got v is equal to u times v. Well u is t squared. v is minus a half cos 2t. We've got to subtract the integral of v du. Well v is minus a half cos 2t and du is 2t dt. Okay so let's just tidy all of this up. So we have v is equal to well I've got t squared and I've got a minus a half here so that's going to be minus t squared over 2 cos 2t and then out here I've got a few different things I can do here I've got a minus times minus anyway so that's going to be plus on the outside here and then I've also got this half times 2 so that's just going to be 1 so I'm going to end up here with the integral of cos well I'll actually put the t first I think so I'll end up with the t in here and then the cos 2t here so they are multiplied and then I've got dt out here. Okay so let's go again then we have this integral here to do and we're going to have to do that by parts as well so let's start again so let's write down our u so again it's in the correct order we have the algebra first and we have the trigonometry if you like uh, term second so we have u is equal to t so if I differentiate I get du dt is equal to 1 or just du is equal to dt. Now the dv then is equal to cos 2t dt. Let's integrate both sides. So v is equal to, if you, div, if you integrate cos you get sine. So again I'm going to get sine 2t. But if I differentiate this I'm going to end up with an extra 2 by the chain rule because I have to differentiate the 2t. So I'll end up with 2 cos 
if you like. So I need to get rid of that by putting in a half here. So I end up with V is equal to a half sine 2t. Okay, so let's just substitute these in. So I'm going to have V is equal to minus t squared over 2 cos 2t. Now it is uv minus the integral of v du. So u is just t. It's going to be t. And then v is half sine 2t. Minus the integral of v du. So v again is a half sine 2t and we've got to multiply that by du but du is just dt. Okay so let's tidy all this up. So we have v is equal to again minus t squared over 2 cos 2t. Here I have a t over 2 sine 2t and here I'm going to bring this half outside the integral sign so it's minus half the integral of sine 2t dt. So we can integrate the sine 2t. That should work for us. So it's minus t squared over 2 cos 2t plus t over 2 sine 2t minus a half. Now if you integrate sine again you get minus cos so it's going to be minus and again we've got to put in this half here so it's going to be minus a half cos 2t. And at this stage I'm going to introduce the constant of integration. Okay, so we're almost there. Let's see, let's just tidy this up again. So we've got v is equal to minus t squared over 2 cos 2t plus t over 2 sine 2t minus minus is plus half half is a quarter. And then we've got cos 2t plus c. Okay, so the next thing we've got to do is work out what this c here is. So let's do that. We were told in the question that v is equal to 0 when t is equal to 0. So let's use this to work out what c is. So v is equal to 0. So we've got to put in 0 wherever t is. So it's going to be minus 0 squared over 2 cos 2 times 0 plus 0 over 2 sine 2 times 0 plus a quarter cos 2 times 0 plus c. So let's just see if we can simplify this. We've got 0 on this side. Well, this here is just 0, so that entire term will just become 0. This is 0, so this entire term will become 0. So we end up here with a quarter cos 0 plus c. Now that will leave us with, uh, the cos of 0 is 1, so we end up with a quarter plus c. So that will finally give us c is equal to minus a quarter. So let's just write down our, our integral with the quarter with the c in there. So our formula, if you like, is v is equal to minus t squared over 2 cos 2t plus t over 2 sine 2t plus a quarter cos 2t and then our c out here we worked out as a quarter minus a quarter. Okay so let's finally answer this question. The question said uh, find v when t is pi over 2. So now we know that t is pi over 2 so let's just substitute that in. So we have v is equal to minus pi over 2 squared over 2 cos 2 times pi over 2 plus pi over 2 over 2 sine 2 times pi over 2 plus a quarter cos 2 times pi over 2 and then finally out here we have our minus a quarter. Okay, so let's tidy all this up. So we have, let's see, we have minus pi over 2 squared. That's going to be minus anyway, and it's pi squared over 2 squared. So 2 squared is 4, and then we've got this 2 here, which we've got to multiply it by as well. So we've got pi squared over 8. 
and then we've got cos of the 2's cancel here and we end up with the cos of pi. The cos of pi is minus 1 so we're going to put in a minus 1 here. Plus here we've got pi over 2 over 2 so that's pi over 4. And here we've got the sine again the 2's will cancel here and we end up with the sine of pi. Well the sine of pi is just 0. Out here we've got a quarter and then we've got the cos of pi again. The cos of pi is minus 1, so we can put a minus 1 in there. And then we've got our minus a quarter out here. So let's work all this out. So we've got minus times minus, which is plus, so that's going to be pi squared over 8. Here we've got a 0, and here we've got minus a quarter, and minus a quarter, that's minus half. Now this is really your answer but let's just simplify it a little bit more maybe. We can add those two fractions so 8 is our common denominator that'll give us pi squared 2 into 8 is 4, 4 1's 4. So that's your answer there or you can give it to, I'm going to do it to four decimal places which is 0 0.7337 and that's to four decimal places. So that's it for part A, quite a long part A I thought, but um, that's part A done. Okay, so this is part B. Two identical smooth spheres A and B, each moving with speed U, collide obliquely. The line joining their centers at the point of impact is along the I axis. Before the collision, the velocity of A makes an acute angle alpha with the positive direction of the I axis, and the velocity of B makes an acute angle alpha with the negative direction of the I axis as shown in the diagram. The coefficient of restitution between the spheres is E, where E is between 0 and 1. Calculate in terms of E and U the velocity of each sphere after the collision. So let's just write down what we have. We have sphere A and we have sphere B. We look at the velocities before impact, we look at the mass, and we will look at the velocity after impact. So if we take, uh, let's say, A first of all, we can see that A is moving in this direction. So if we resolve that, come out here, come up along here, and the speed is U. So that means that we can resolve this vector into its I and J components. So the I component will be U cos alpha, I, and the J component will be U sine alpha. Now if we look at B then, B is going in this direction, again we can resolve it. So again this is going to be alpha here, it's an alternate angle. So out along here, well we've got U, the speed is U, so out along here then we'll have minus U cos alpha, and up along here then we'll just have U sine alpha. So it'll be minus U cos alpha I plus U sine alpha J. So before impact then A will have velocity vector u cos alpha i plus u sine alpha j. Its mass will be m, let's say. They're both identical smooth spheres, so we'll give them the same uh, mass. Okay, so we look at b then. So b will have the velocity before will be minus u cos alpha i plus u sine alpha j. Its mass will be m as well. So let's look at the velocities afterwards then. Okay, so the velocity won't change in the j direction, but it will change in the i direction. So I'm going to say in the i direction I'm going to call it pi plus the j direction is not going to change, so it will still be u sine alpha j. Let's call this one q in the i direction plus u sine alpha j. Okay, so we have all our vectors. Let's just form two equations. We're going to use simultaneous equations then to solve for p and q. And once we have those, we'll be able to write our two velocities afterwards, after impact. So let's go with that then. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the principle of conservation of momentum which just simply says that the momentum before impact is going to be the same as the momentum afterwards. So the momentum before for the two spheres is mass times velocity. So we're going to look at m u cos alpha plus minus u cos alpha. So it's going to be minus u cos alpha and again that's times m as well. And the momentum afterwards then is just going to be m times p plus m times q. So we can simplify all of this. 
we've got mu cos alpha minus mu cos alpha, that's going to be zero. The m's here we can divide across by m, so we just end up with p plus q. So this is going to be our first equation here. Let's look at NLR, which is Newton's law of restitution, which just says that the relative velocity after is divided by the relative velocity before impact is equal to minus e. So let's write all that out. So the relative velocity after is going to be p minus q. The relative velocity before is u cos alpha minus minus u cos alpha that's equal to minus e. So let's simplify this. I'm going to multiply across by the denominator here. So I'll end up with p minus q. The denominator here is u cos alpha plus u cos alpha, which is just 2 u cos alpha. So on the right hand side I'll get minus e 2 u cos alpha. So this is my second equation. So I'm going to put these two equations together. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add these two equations, this one and this one here. You'll see that the q's will cancel and I'll get 2p. So p plus p is 2p minus q plus q is 0 and minus e2u cos alpha plus 0 will give me minus e2u cos alpha. So if I take 1 plus 2 I'll get 2p is equal to minus e 2u cos alpha. So that will give me p is equal to, I just divide by 2, give me minus e u cos alpha. So now I've got p, so all I've got to do now is work out what q is. So if you have a look at equation 1, equation 1 says that p plus q is equal to 0. This is equation 1. So that just means that p is equal to minus q, or q is equal to minus p. So that would just then mean that q would be equal to e u cos alpha. So in other words, if I just come down here, q is going to be equal to minus p. So q is just equal to the negative version of this here. Okay, so I have p and q. All I've got to do now is write out the two vectors. So let's do that. So my answer then here will be A is minus E U cos alpha in the I direction plus U sine alpha in the J direction. And then B is, this was Q remember, so it's going to be E U cos alpha in the I direction plus U sine alpha in the j direction. And that's it for part b1. a and b move perpendicularly to each other after the collision. Show that e is equal to tan alpha. So we should be able to do the dot product for these two vectors and we should end up with e is equal to tan alpha. So when you do the dot product of two vectors that are perpendicular you should get zero. So let's do that. So we have minus e u cos alpha. I'm going to multiply that by E u cos alpha, then add u sine alpha multiplied by u sine alpha, and given that they're perpendicular, it should be equal to zero. So let's multiply these out. So we've got minus e times minus e, so that's minus e squared, u times u, u squared, cos alpha, cos alpha is going to be cos squared alpha. Here we'll end up with u squared sine squared alpha is equal to zero. Now what I'm going to do next here is divide across by cos squared alpha. So if I divide this by cos squared alpha I'll get e minus e squared u squared. If I divide this by cos squared alpha I'll get u squared tan squared alpha is equal to zero. So sine over cos is tan. Okay so let's move on again. So we have u squared tan squared alpha is equal to e squared u squared and then just divide across we're going to get tan squared alpha is equal to e squared. So all we've got to do now is square root both sides so that will give us tan alpha on this side and e on this side and that is it. And that's it for this question.